Hey everyone, uh, today I am going to show you how to use a cheap and uh, common ATX power supply to power various things you're doing on your desktop like IC repair, gauge cluster repair, and whatever else you can think of that needs 3.35 volts or 12 volts. So this is what I built. This is an ATX power supply, um, and it just has this uh, little board on it that allows you to connect directly to everything, and it also gives you a USB plug. Uh, super easy to, to do, um, super handy. I'm gonna be using it for a lot of like gauge cluster repair and things of that nature. Um, I was gonna put this in an enclosure, but there's really no reason to. It's pretty self-contained just the way it is. And then uh, I've just put these little connectors on it so I can connect directly to wires uh, without it too much problem if I don't want to go directly to the board right there. Um, should be super handy, very easy, very cheap. Um, I will put all the links below for the parts that you need to build this in case you want to do your own. Today I am going to make a uh, desktop power supply using this ATX adapter. And this is pretty rad because it's got negative 12 volts, positive 12 volts, positive 5 volts, and positive 3.3, and a USB connection, which is probably most of what I'll be using. And then I also got myself a set of test leads. Um, these are kind of cool. They got little sharp little poker guys right in here. Let's see if I can, I don't know, I'll zoom in on that. There we go. Got little sharp poker, pokers in there. I can just stick it on a wire. And then the ATX power supply right here. And this has a bunch of extra wires that we're gonna, we're gonna trim off. This seemed like the easiest way to uh, have something to power uh, gauge clusters and ECMs and some of the other stuff I do. So besides that, we'll need a few tools. I got some uh, flush cuts right here. Uh, just grabbed a couple of random strippers and crimpers. Uh, pretty much anything will work for that. You don't even really have to have it. Uh, I got some scissors. There we go. Phillips screwdriver. And some double-sided sticky tape that I had laying around. And I don't know if you can see these two ring terminals. There we go. Still doesn't want to autofocus. Pretty simple. So anyways, first thing we're going to do, take this bad boy apart so we can take the extra wires off. go. Ah, dropped it inside. Oh no. I think there's one probably under there. Look at that. Nah, I can't stick it in there. this for a second. Had to go get a, uh, a screwdriver to pop the sides open. This just slides off. So we're just going to flip that out of the way and we're going to start trimming some of these wires. So this is the connector we need 
to plug into uh, this right here. So it's the other wires that we're going to get rid of. And let's see what we got going on here. Where is there? That's what we needed. By the way, these are these are color coded. Um, red is five volts. Uh, orange is 3.3. Yellow is 12 volts. Yellow with a black stripe is negative 12, and then black is ground. If I remember correctly, I'll probably double check that. But uh, that's the way it always used to be. All right. So the grounds, we don't have to worry about doing anything bad with. So I'll start trimming those. And it looks like we have another set of grounds here. What connectors are those? So we don't want that at all. I'm going to save some of these, but probably not the plus 3.3. All right. I'm going to save two of these grounds, I think. Actually, you know what? I should save three of them. Three seems like the number. All right. And then, so we got three grounds right there. And I'm not going to leave a lot hanging off of here, so we will cut those right there. And then reds. Put those right there, and yellows, cut those right there, and we'll leave a 3.3 in case we need it, and then all these grounds right here we're not going to use, and they can't short out because they're grounds. All right. Now the only thing we have left is some negatives. These are all negatives. All right, so those will all come through there. We'll add some zip ties and clean those up later. And let's just put all these together. You know what, there's gotta be a better way to clean those up. Should on solder them, but I don't want to do that much work. Actually, you know what? For now, 
probably tape all of these off. Put them back inside here. Hmm. So many decisions. Yeah, we'll just leave them off for now. Plug our little fan back in. That would be the issue. And a little card to protect it from shorting out against the case. Alright, good to go. right there. that. Go get some zip ties, clean that up. Boom. Get rid of this. So, I put some ring terminals on here. Let's see if I can get 
some ring terminals and some heat treating to clean those up. You should probably zoom in, huh? There we go. So I'll be using this for positive 12 volts most often. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these on here. There we go. So now I can just uh, clip these guys on. Any wire I need to power. I can also hook stuff up directly to here if I need to. All right, and clean this stuff up a little bit. By the way, here's a tech tip. Always use a set of flush cuts like this to cut zip ties. That way, when you uh, put your finger across here, that you don't get cut. And by quality zip ties, these are not. Now this is not the right way to do this, but I am just going to zip tie these up right now out of the way. They should short out, but you shouldn't really leave wires like that. But I, I have a plan for those that I'll do later. So for now, this will have to work. Look at that. Let's see if I can get it on here. Nice little, uh, nice little deal. Doesn't take up much room on my desk, but it does what I need it to do. This will be perfect for fixing gauge clusters and BCMs and other random stuff I do. All right, thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, leave a comment below and tell me what you thought of the video. Until next time.